I'll go ahead and get you started introducing you to my platform, which is the Millionaire by Morning podcast. Today we have with us entrepreneur Lorraine, the painless piano coach. How are you doing today, Lorraine? I am fabulous. Thank you for having me. Not a problem at all. I am so um, excited about having you today because I like to let my crowd and let my listeners know that uh, you can be passionate about some of anything, uh, whatever it is that you want to do in life, you can create a business from it or you can create an opportunity from that. And Absolutely. I want to know if that's something that you have experienced and the reason that you became the painless piano coach. Absolutely. Um, my journey as a piano teacher started when I was 14 years old, actually, because my dad said I needed to get a job. <laughs> and But I lived out, out of town. I didn't have a way to go work at McDonald's or anywhere like that. And he said, well, that's your problem. <laughs> so I was like, well, what am I supposed to do? Well, um, I had a couple of friends, neighbors who had asked if we could, who were about the same age as I was, and we had kind of bartered services for, um, I would teach them piano and they would teach me things that they knew about. So I had already started going kind of that entrepreneurial direction. And I thought, well, maybe there's a couple of people at church who want their kids to take cheap piano lessons or something. So that's how I started. And then after, after I had been student teaching under the direction of my teacher for a couple of years, I started to think I really enjoyed it. And maybe that was what I would want to do as a career. So um, as you can see, that is what I am doing partly as one of my business direction. So that's what I was about to ask next. Is that full time or is it just one business or how are you operating at the moment? Um, so right now I just have a handful of in-person um, coaching, piano coaching clients. I also do group classes occasionally. Um, and then I'm also working on building my online piano coaching business, which I will be launching um, the very first version of that in a little while this fall in the next couple of weeks. Um, and then a large part of my income is actually because I'm a professional pianist. So I get hired by churches to fill in when they need a pianist because their regular is away on vacation or something like that. Um, or for weddings and funerals, um, recording artists, concert soloists, um, all kinds of, I can't even count the <laughs> number of situations I've gotten to um, play piano for. That is, awesome. that is awesome, the fact that you're getting to do not only what you're good at, but sound like what you love to do as well. Absolutely, yeah. I. I can't stop myself from doing this if I wanted to, because it just, I have to. <laughs> I totally get it. That's how I am. Um, that's how I am about marketing. It took me a while to understand that. It took me a, a while to understand exactly what marketing was. Um, I, I started getting sales jobs and, and things of that nature, thinking that, that, that was marketing, but I really like the aspect of being creative and creating stuff and the artistic side of it. So I totally get it. Um, I was into it and I wouldn't be able to stop it if I wanted to, whether I was doing it for work full time or not. But I mentioned that because the first thing I noticed, and I say it's just kind of in me, the first thing I noticed is the painless piano coach. And I think that is just the one of the best titles you could have for a piano coach because I look at it from a marketing perspective. And when people think about 
you know, they want to go ahead and decide they want to have piano lessons, they probably are think, thinking, well, it's a, it, it'll be a little painful just sitting there, my hands, you know, in pain. So that's probably the vision that they're having. And I like how you touched on that and made that kind of, you know, your niche and just dealt with it from the, from the top. Can you speak on that? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to hear that feedback. Um, so that is actually a title that I started using just this year as I'm rebranding um, because um, I was actually, so I've, I've got kind of a backstory here, <laughs> but I was actually on a reality show for entrepreneurs at the beginning of this year, which really stretched me and encouraged me to think differently about how I do what I do. I'm not just another piano teacher down the street. Um, I have some really unique experiences and unique perspectives about how to play the piano, um, which was not conveyed in my previous studio name, which was simply Lorraine's Piano Academy. <laughs> so um, for the last close to 20 years, I have really focused on how correct posture and arm position and just complete body alignment affects your ability to play the piano well and whether you will develop pain and repetitive motion injuries or not. Because that was actually something that almost ended my playing while I was still in high school because I practiced hours a day by that point. Um, and I developed really bad carpal tunnel and tendonitis to the point where I could only play maybe about 10 minutes a day before my hands would just cramp up. And I had no control over my fingers whatsoever. And it was extremely painful. And I had started thinking by that point that maybe I did want to be a piano teacher or a pianist as a career. And now I could hardly even play. And what kind of teacher can't even play? So um, it took me a couple more years, but I did eventually find another piano teacher who very generously made space for me in her studio. She didn't actually have room, but she made room for me. And I'm so grateful because she showed me the techniques, the correct techniques to eliminate my pain and inability to play well anymore. And so since then, I have just been working on learning more about those correct techniques and teaching them to my students and so when I was on the reality show earlier this year um, all of the mentors and coaches there really encouraged me to explore that niche and capitalize on it right right that's definitely something that sets you apart um I've never even heard <laughs> I've never even heard it like put that way you know, as um, because there are techniques. There's techniques that 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 people um, don't teach. That you know, it's it's as far as playing an instrument at all. Um, you know, a lot of people think you just sit down and play it, whether it's you know guitar or piano or whatever the case may be. Um, but if you don't want your back to go out, you know, you don't want to lock up. You might need a specific type of coach, <laughs> you know? So I commend you on that. Um, a little bit about the reality show. Was it just solely entrepreneurship or was it like uh, tied in with music? It was for any entrepreneur or small business startup of any kind. Um, there were about 70 
uh, different businesses competing in the season that I was part of. Um, a, a wide variety of um, of businesses. Um, there was mental health, medical offices, um, tourism, um, educational businesses, um, catering, home design. I mean, it is, it was a very diverse group and it was amazing to meet all the different people there. It sounds like it. It sounds like it. Um, businesses can be so different, but so much the same, you know, once you start, um, you know, fulfilling, I guess, in a sense, fulfilling your orders or, you know, making customers, uh, <laughs> making customers happy. That's who it, it comes down to. Um, I want to, I want to do something new with you. I haven't done on my podcast as of yet. Um, as far as the millionaire by morning goes, my brand, I have what's called, um, well, I have a program and it's seven different M's. The, uh, different M's are all a process or, um, a program that allow people to kind of change their way of thinking, you know, from, um, beginning on their journey to uh, seeing it through and becoming successful. So what I want to do is ask you the, uh, the seven different, I'm going to ask you the seven different M's. They're words that start with the letter M. And um, so you can just answer based on your business and your knowledge of your business. All right? Sounds good. Okay. Okay, so the first one is mastery. So how much practice do you believe that it takes to become a master of pianist? Um, well, the, the standard answer is that it takes 10,000 hours to become a master of anything. <laughs> right. Good answer. Um, <laughs> um, I, I would, I can't. It's hard to calculate off the top of my head, but I would guess, um, you know, I probably had somewhere close to that. If you figure that I had been practicing piano almost every day since I was seven from the time I was 14. And when I was, when I was about mm, probably around 13, 12, 13, 14 is when I first started getting requests to play for um, weddings and so that probably that was kind of my first taste of being a professional pianist okay. um so yeah I, I was probably getting up there I mean 365 days a year um I didn't practice every day of the week but you know an hour a day five days a week or so for most of those seven years. Probably yeah. close. <laughs> That's pretty close to it. That's pretty close to 10,000. Okay. All right. Well, with you doing that, um, what, what motivation? Motivation is the next word. What motivation goes behind sitting in front of that piano all of those hours what would you say has to be your motivation? For me, I think that originally it was my outlet. Um, well, and even before I realized that it was an outlet, it was my motivation was my inspiration. So when I was six years old, um, one of my aunts and uncles was friends at the time with the pianist from the San Francisco Symphony. And he came to visit my aunt and uncle for Christmas. And after Christmas dinner, he sat at their piano and played Christmas carols. And he saw me staring at him while, you know, this little six-year-old me just totally mesmerized. And he asked if I would like to go sit at the piano bench with him. And I said, yes. 
so he had me sit at the piano bench next to him. I don't even remember what Christmas carol he played while I sat there, but I just remember seeing his hands just flying up and down the piano and thinking to myself, I am going to play like that someday. And so I just started literally harassing my parents for the next year, begging for piano lessons until finally my dad couldn't stand it anymore. And he told my mom, get her a piano teacher so I don't have to hear about it anymore. Okay. And so that that is probably the underlying just drive that I have to play. That's all it took was just that one time. I think that's amazing. It was, I think it speaks to the power of music and how influential it can be for good. Yeah, definitely. I agree with that. Um, next one, mindset. Where does one's mindset, let's say a student of yours, need to be in order to continue throughout the process and want to be a piano player? I think, I think that wanting to be is the first step. Um, I do work with my students a lot on mindset um, and just asking them to think about what, what they want to look like and sound like when they play the piano. Um, it varies from a very tiny um, aspect, such as what do you want this measure to sound like when you play it to the big picture of what do you want to look like when you're sitting at the piano? How do you want to feel when you're sitting at the piano? How do you want to feel when you, it's your turn to go on stage and play for a recital? How do you want to feel when someone gives you a compliment and you have the confidence to accept that compliment and not brush it away? Okay, okay, so... Um... That would be a form of visualization. Absolutely. Okay, so to add to that, would you say that playing is a form of meditation? Oh, yes, it definitely can be. Yeah, yeah there is something so relaxing about sitting down at the piano, especially um especially on bad days, <laughs> you know, just letting it all out at the piano, being able to play something really fast and loud <laughs> if you need, if that's what you enjoy. I enjoy fast and loud <laughs> to let out my stress, um, but also playing soft and soothing um, when it's the time for that. And definitely it's absolutely meditation. Just going from rock and roll to jazz. <laughs> <I appreciate it. laughs> whatever, yeah, whatever you need in, the, in that moment. Okay, all right. So as a professional, how would one marketing market themselves? Whether, whether coach, um, you know, piano teacher, or um, a person who wants to travel with maybe a band, how would they market themselves? I think for me, my biggest breakthrough for marketing has been getting comfortable with being myself. And just, I mean, that's something that I've been working on a lot over the last few years. Um, I had a breakup a, from a really toxic marriage. And so over the last few years, I have been really working on figuring out who I am, who I want to be, how to genuinely be me in day-to-day -day life, as well as showing that through my marketing. Got it. Got it. And the um, entrepreneur, the show, helped out a lot and gave you a lot of tips. Would I be correct on that? 
Yes. Um, it was just, it was the most incredible experience I've ever had. And, um, I'm hoping to be able to be part of that again on a, at a future date, but, um, just the vibe of encouragement and acceptance towards everyone for for the stage of business that they were at and um, who they were as people was just incredible. And it gave me a lot more confidence when I came home and started um, to rebrand. That's, that's good. That's nice. Um, the confidence is, is a big part. So with marketing, now you will have the reason we market is for monetization. So if someone was looking at this and saying, okay, uh, maybe in the future I want to be, you know, a pianist, play the piano, whatever the case may be, is there um, a career for it? Absolutely. Um, on one hand, it completely dropped into my lap as, you know, just unforeseen blessings. But um, if that is a desire that someone has and an intention that someone has, um, you could definitely, I think that you could um, reverse engineer my experiences to create a plan for becoming a professional p musician or pianist. <laughs> Reverse engineer, right? <laughs> I think so. I get it. Okay. Um, okay, you mentioned this a little earlier about um, kind of techniques, but the, um, the other one, it would be movement. And with that, I would like to know, um, movement can be either exercise, you know, techniques to keep you um, being able to being able to play without, you know, getting carpal tunnel. But also, as far as travel, uh, could 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 someone be, you know, pretty much into um, being a uh, having a career as a pianist and be able to travel? Oh, absolutely. So that's actually something that I talk with prospective um, clients about who would like to hire me as a pianist. Um, if they are in a location or going to a location and they would like me to be their wedding pianist or event pianist or um, give a workshop, if they can get me there, I'll do it at no cost because I love travel opportunities. Oh, wow. Now, so if it's on my bucket list <laughs> and they can get me there, I will I will play their piano. That's awesome. That's, now, that's one half of a benefit. As um, long as they get your, your room and board, right? Absolutely. If it's somewhere that's on my bucket list to go, um, I'm... Yeah, works fabulously. Yeah, that's a good trade-out. That's a very good trade-out. Well, Lorraine, I want to um, ask you for your social handles. Where can people find you if they are interested in uh, being coached? Well, on, on all social media, actually, pretty much all of the standard, um, so Facebook, LinkedIn, um, Instagram, TikTok, Threads, I am at Lorraine's Piano. And then Facebook, my personal profile is at Lorraine's Piano Academy. I set that up many years ago when Facebook was brand new. And I intended to just use it for business. So um, it's actually my personal profile. But at Lorraine's Piano Academy is where I share the majority of my content. Um, and then I actually have a VIP behind the scenes group right now um, because my reality show season just went live a few weeks ago. So I'm celebrating that in there and sharing a bunch of behind the scenes footage and info um, as well as watch parties. 
and then I'll be launching, relaunching my Painless Piano Players VIP group on Facebook here in a couple of weeks. What is the age group that you work with? I usually tend to work most with middle school through middle age adults. Usually clients who come to work with me have already been playing the piano for a few years and have some degree of proficiency. And they're starting to realize that um, either the teacher they're currently with is not um, offering them the um, the challenge or the expertise that they are looking for, or they are starting to experience some of those repetitive motion injuries due to incorrect technique, and they stumble upon me and realize that that's what they didn't know they were looking for. Um, so usually those are the two groups, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, Lorraine, I want to thank you for bringing your expertise to my show this afternoon or this evening. And I want to wish you the best of luck. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure to chat with you and get to know you a little bit. You as well. And um, what I tell all of my guests is I do like to circle back around six months later something like that to uh, kind of touch in and see where you're at with your business, if that's okay. Absolutely. All Let's right. keep in touch. All right. Let's do it. Okay. Well, have a great night, and um, I'll speak to you a little bit later on down the road. Thank you. You as well. All right. Goodbye.